because some of this stuff I got to get out of my system because I don't want to curse nobody out in the street. So I come to tell y'all about it. Now, the same individual who cursed me out just the other day, just cursed me out bad right there on Florida Street in the middle of the day, made me feel about this song. I just got back in my car. Stole my light fixtures out the house, took down all the ceiling fans, and told somebody else, I'll take something else if I want to. Dug the plants up off the ground. And then called me on the radio this morning and said, Reverend Watts, pray for me. <laughs> and I said, I know there's a God up in heaven because he's trying to get my attention. He's trying to figure out just how much religion do I really have live on the radio, the phone ring, and the first voice on the other end, and I'm thinking about my ceiling fan, my light fixtures, and my plants that have been dug up, and the person in there say, pray for me. All I can say is, help me, Lord Jesus. Because <laughs> you're trying to do something with me, and I'm just going to submit to it. I ain't going to fight it. I was thinking yesterday, I told my wife yesterday, so I just, I'm just going down there to the Kanoa County Court. I'm just going to get a warrant. Ain't nobody going to just take my light fixture down off the wall and then brag about it. I'm just not going to take that. I was determined. Then the morning I was going to tell Tony, go down there and get a warrant. I want my light fixtures back. I want my ceiling fans back. But the Lord has something else in mind. And I'm, I got I to gotta laugh at myself, see, because I, I, you, you laugh at yourself and you can get over it, see. And you can get over it and you can move forward. And God was trying to help me to see that person's soul is more important than light fixtures and, light, and ceiling fans. And the Lord also reminded me, it ain't the first time you've been cursed out. <laughs> and it probably won't be the last. <laughs> get used to it. Get over it in the name of Jesus. It is the unlovable people that we encounter in the thoroughfare of life that God is wanting to unleash his grace upon in and through us. Anybody can love somebody that's lovely, that's nice and sweet, that's kind and generous, and that is very polite, but you got to, it takes the Holy Spirit, no, the Holy Ghost to love some folk. You got to go all the way back and get the ghost. Some people take a healthy dose of the Holy Ghost to get you to love them. And that's what Jesus wants us to have. So the Bible says that he was moved with compassion over the condition of the people. Over the condition of the people. And even in our own neighborhood, my brothers and my sisters, there are some people that need someone to be moved with compassion. We can't just forget about them as if they don't exist like they are not there. And so we see our young men in particular not getting the skills in the school system to, to function in the, in the school and knowing they don't have the skill to function in the workforce. And so they're, they're disconnected from the opportunity that exists out there. And they're like sheep without a shepherd. Somebody got to try to find them. Maybe we can't win them all. Maybe one or two, three or four we can win. And we can disciple them, and they can be the special forces to go back and reach out to others who are in that same predicament. We got young women in this community that have been abused through domestic abuse, sexual abuse. They have been mishandled and mauled, and they're mean and angry and bitter at the world. But somebody got to be moved with compassion and realize they're like sheep without a shepherd. They're scattered. They're driven. Somebody got to reach out in the name of Jesus and try to touch them. That's what the Lord would have us to do at this late hour that we are. We're at a very late hour. I don't know how late it is, but it's later than it's ever been before. And it's time for the church just to stand up like a regal, mighty army and shine forth the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ and tell people, bring your tired, weary, raggedy, dysfunctional, drunk, drug-addicted, prostituting, homosexual, pimping self, right up here and receive the gospel. There's hope for you too. There's hope for you. That's the gospel that we have, a gospel that can say from the uttermost and to the guttermost, the gospel that has power to overcome depression and discouragement, a gospel that has the power to overcome dysfunction, a gospel that has the power to restore people's personhood, to restore their identity as a child of God, as a son of God, as a daughter of God. 
So let us together, let us recapture this. Let us recapture our evangelistic fervor and zeal. Let us recapture our passion for the lost. And let us recapture our faith in the gospel, the same gospel to save you can save others. You know what happens to us? We develop spiritual amnesia. We forget what bad sinners we were. <laughs> We just forget just how conniving we were, how scheming we were, and how clever we were at covering up. We forget how we backdoored people and how we set traps for folk. We forget all those things that we now hate, we used to do. I'm reminded of my dear old grandfather. My grandfather was a bright guy. He taught himself electronics. He was a skilled carpenter. He was an electrician. He taught himself how to do all this stuff. But he squandered away all of his money on alcohol. And despite the way he lived, he still.